Y ahora nos comunicamos en Washington, la capital de Estados Unidos, con el abogado internacional Jared Genser, defensor de los presos políticos Félix Maradiaga y Juan Sebastián Chamorro, quien ha litigado en más de 25 países ante regímenes autocráticos defendiendo a presos políticos. Le preguntamos qué influencia puede tener la presión política de la comunidad internacional para lograr la liberación de los reos de conciencia ante un régimen que no solamente ha conculcado el debido proceso y el derecho a la defensa en Nicaragua, sino que se niega a cumplir con el mandato de la Corte Interamericana de Derechos Humanos. Y esto fue lo que nos dijo. Jared, los presos políticos que defiendes en Nicaragua, Félix Maradiaga y Juan Sebastián Chamorro, han estado más de 530 días en la cárcel del Chipote. Incluso ya fueron condenados, igual que los demás presos políticos, en un simulacro de juicio con sentencias de hasta 13 años de prisión. ¿Cuál es su situación en este momento y qué perspectivas existen de que puedan ser liberados? Well, I think there's definitely prospects for their uh, liberation. I, I would say my immediate concern uh, is that for now 84 days, uh, Felix, Juan Sebastian, and the more than 40 political prisoners in El Chipote have been held incommunicado uh, and in flagrant violation of their rights to be able to communicate with their family and counsel. Um, this matches actually the number of days they were originally detained incommunicado and is of enormous concern. And so we're obviously calling for um, immediate transparency and accountability for proof of life and for immediate access to be restored um, to all of the prisoners in El Chipote to their, uh, their families and their lawyers. Um, with respect to the broader issue of the situation of the political prisoners, you know, obviously we're now at more than 220 political prisoners in the country and several dozen detained just uh, in the run up to the most recent municipal elections. And while obviously that is uh, incredibly disturbing and upsetting, uh, what I can say from my perspective is that the pressure is undoubtedly building from the international community in ways that make me cautiously optimistic that we will get to a place where the Ortega regime um, will need to begin to release political prisoners. We're not there yet. We still have a long way to go. But uh, the world is coming together to send a very clear signal to uh, Daniel Ortega and his wife that uh, the current trajectory is simply unacceptable. Antes de hablar sobre el papel de la comunidad internacional, ¿existe alguna alternativa legal para obligar al gobierno a cumplir con la resolución de la Corte Interamericana de Justicia que demanda la liberación de Félix, de Juan Sebastián y otros 70 presos políticos? Pero bueno, el régimen de Ortega no cumple con el mandato de la Corte. En todos estos tipos de casos, uno tiene que proceder de una manera que entiende que... There, there are generally not legal remedies that are available. Um, domestically, of course, the legal process uh, has been uh, a travesty of justice. Um, the charges against uh, Felix Juan Sebastian and really all the political prisoners are obviously fabricated and, and in violation of their rights to freedom of opinion, expression, peaceful assembly, political participation. At the international level, of course, we have had the Inter-American Court of Human Rights demanding their release, uh, a number of their releases as well. Um, but ultimately, we're not going to resolve this case through uh, through legal remedies. We really need to combine those legal decisions with uh, political and public relations advocacy um, and dramatically elevate the costs to uh, Ortega and his regime uh, dramatically above the benefits. In my experience, dictators only release political prisoners when they have to. They don't do it when they want to. But when they're put into a situation where uh, many worse things will happen if they don't release political prisoners. If it's a choice between their survival and releasing political prisoners, they will release political prisoners. We're not there yet. There's a lot more work to be done. But I am pleased with the kind of pressure being brought by the international community in a wide array of ways, um, which I believe is definitely being felt by, uh, you know, by the Ortega regime. ¿Cómo evalúas la efectividad que han tenido hasta ahora las sanciones internacionales y la presión externa? ¿Consideras que hay suficiente presión política para forzar un cambio en el régimen, ya sea para aceptar un diálogo o liberar a los presos políticos? Clearly not yet. Um, but at the same time, you know, it was very interesting to see the United States most recently uh, decide to impose sanctions on the gold sector and uh, sanction 500 people in a single day. Um, and I think that that demonstrates that the United States, as one illustration, 
working with the EU and other partners um, are um, now engaging in uh, exponential escalation of the pressure they're going to put on Ortega. I think up until now, what we have seen is incremental pressure being raised. And in my experience, going up against dictators in Latin America and beyond, uh, incremental pressure doesn't change the views of dictators. I think that once those uh, those consequences start to become exponential and unpredictable, this is when you know uh, dictators have to start to think twice about what they do next. Uh, and you know the fact that the United States has started with the gold sector means they could go to the meat sector next. They could go to any other sector of the economy. At the end of the day, when a when a regime no longer has the money to pay the military, the security forces, and the police, um, that is when they're at risk of uh, of losing control. Um, you know, China and Russia are providing moral support, but not financial support um, to Ortega. And unlike you know a country like Venezuela, which has you know unlimited natural resources. Uh, Ortega doesn't have the kind of natural resources in Nicaragua that would enable him to hold on for, you know, for an indefinite period of time. So, you know, I think that when you see um, things like, you know, the resolution in the OAS General Assembly um, passing, you know, by consensus, when you see the UN Human Rights Council um, creating this group of experts, uh, human rights experts on Nicaragua by consensus, right, it demonstrates that Ortega is out of friends. But if I were Ortega, I would be very worried right now because there's no there's no telling what's going to happen next. Um, it's no longer going to be predictable and incremental. It's quite clear that the international community, despite the distractions of uh, what's happening in Ukraine and might have taken a lot of public attention, that the United States, Canada, um, Spain, the EU, um, you know, are all paying very close attention to what's happening in Nicaragua and are very disturbed by uh, by the approach of the uh, Ortega Murillo regime, regime. So, you know, from the discussions that we're having all over the world, uh, there are a lot of things uh, that I can't speak about now, but that I know people are talking about, um, you know, that are going to stun Ortega, scare Ortega, and he's going to have to start to make some very difficult decisions about what's more important to him, staying in power or releasing political prisoners. And I think that when it comes down to those kinds of questions, um, most dictators in my experience choose to release the political prisoners rather than, you know, put their own ability to stay in power at risk. Pero también hay una cierta normalización de las relaciones de instituciones financieras internacionales con el régimen de Daniel Ortega. El Fondo Monetario Internacional, por ejemplo, acaba de presentar una evaluación elogiando al gobierno por el manejo de la economía, sin importar la supresión de las libertades, de las elecciones y las violaciones a los derechos humanos. ¿Existe el riesgo de que se produzca una fatiga internacional o una aceptación de la impunidad de la dictadura? So, I mean, the IMF is not a human rights organization. And so, to me, reading the most recent IMF report, um, there was nothing surprising for me in there. It was disappointing, but it was predictably disappointing. You know, the IMF puts on blinders and says, we're going to look at, you know, institutions of government that relate to the economy and we're going to assess our views of where things are at, etc. Uh, you know, the IMF doesn't have enormous resources to rescue Ortega, and I don't believe they're going to spend enormous resources to rescue Ortega. The uh, Central American uh, Integration Bank has been spending more money, um, but I know there's a lot of pressure on member states uh, of the BCEI to slow or stop that flow of funds. Um, and, you know, the reality is the economy in Nicaragua is, uh, is not good and is getting worse. And when you start to see sectoral sanctions being imposed, Um, you know, the U.S. has started with the gold sector. I would be surprised if other um, other uh, governments and multilateral institutions don't follow in the in the footsteps of the United States and expand to other sectors as well. People have been talking a lot about the return to power of um, you know uh, leftist governments in countries uh, like uh, Colombia and uh, Brazil and, uh, and and Chile, um, and undoubtedly, you know, Ortega will have more friends in the region. But having moral support is not the same thing as having financial support. Uh, and I don't see any of those countries or governments being prepared to, um, to step up and provide financial support to uh, Ortega. And even, you know, even though you have new governments in those countries, also Honduras as well, um, you know, those countries haven't raised their hand and objected to resolutions passing the General Assembly of the OAS or passing the UN Human Rights Council and so forth. Um, we hope that those governments, um, those four governments I mentioned, you know, as well as Mexico, uh, in light of its orientation on Nicaragua, will reach out 
through the channels they have to say to Ortega, this is just not a sustainable path for you. And there's only so much we can do to help. So help us help you, you know, let's, let's get to a better, a better place here. So I'm, I'm more optimistic on the low likelihood of the release of the political prisoners in the uh, foreseeable future. Uh, obviously the broader and longer term problems of Nicaragua relating to democratization and a restoration of human rights is a longer term struggle, but it's quite clear to me that the escalation of, of the focus on uh, Daniel Ortega and his regime and their bad acts is accelerating. And the process of the UN is going to help with that enormously because there's now this group, the screen member group of human rights experts that are engaging in wide consultations and gathering information and support. And I would be surprised if their report is not damning um, of uh, Ortega and his regime. And this will create further momentum at the UN, further momentum within the OAS system and so forth. So, you know, I, I don't see any positive signs out there for Ortega right now when it comes to the prospects of being able to justify, uh, you know, the holding of these political prisoners. The, the irony is, um, from, from where I sit, he doesn't know, I guess, how much he's helping us by doing dumb things like detaining political prisoners incommunicado for 84 days, because this is just totally unjustifiable in the same way that it's unjustifiable that these prisoners have not even been able to be given Bibles. Who in the international community is going to defend those kinds of decisions? So I often rely on dictators to make mistakes, and he's making a lot of mistakes. And so, you know, from where I sit, um, you know, uh, the pressure is only going to continue to build. There are never any quick or easy solutions here. I don't want to uh, get people's hopes up too much. But, you know, when I look at the prospects for the political prisoners in a country like uh, Nicaragua, and I compare it, for example, to Venezuela, you know, where Nicolas Maduro, for example, has allowed the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to visit, has allowed the prosecutor of the National Criminal Court to visit, has managed to get into this dialogue process, this never-ending dialogue process to nowhere, where the international community is, is split over, you know, what to do and how to react. Um, you know, Ortega is doing none of these things. And, uh, and this means that, um, you know, he has no support, really, in the international community of any kind. And so it's true that institutions like the IMF are going to continue to do their work. Um, but, uh, you know, but ultimately, I think the overall trend line um, is one that if I were Ortega, I would be very worried about. Ortega ha violado todas las normas mínimas establecidas por Naciones Unidas para prisioneros, lo que se conoce como las reglas Mandela, y no ha pasado nada. Usted mencionó los 84 días en aislamiento en que han estado los presos políticos sin tener una visita familiar. ¿Cómo se le puede explicar a los familiares de los reos de conciencia que ni siquiera se ha logrado la visita de la Cruz Roja Internacional a la cárcel o una evaluación del impacto que tiene el aislamiento y la tortura en la salud de los presos? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, in the near term, if for any families, obviously this is incredibly upsetting, disturbing, worrying, um, you know, and... Uh, you know, there's very little that you can say to a family of a political prisoner right now who's been isolated for that long. Having worked against probably about 25 authoritarian regimes over my career, over my 20 year career, and having worked on political prisoner cases in all those different countries, um, you know, uh, I have a different point of view that is not, you know, exclusively or narrowly focused on Nicaragua, but it's put in the context of how these things have played out in my experience in many other places, including many other places in Latin America. And what I would say is that, um, you know, these are the kinds of things that, uh, you know, these are the kinds of things, uh, the kinds of mistakes that dictators make that, that make my work a lot easier. Um, and so, you know, obviously we're calling for proof of life. I mean, the irony is it would help Dana Ortega to allow access to these prisoners immediately, uh, not hurt him. It would help him because, uh, you know, there is going to pre be pressure that's going to be building and grow higher and higher and more draconian consequences coming down the longer that he tries to maintain this kind of posture, which, as you said, violates the Nelson Mandela rules, uh, the standard minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners, the UN declaration on uh, about that. Um, and, uh, and nobody is going to you know, nobody is defending, you know, the way he's treating the prisoners. I think that the consequences are only going to be more surprising and more dramatic from here. And, you know, at a certain point, uh, there's, you know, Ortega's going to have to make some tough decisions about uh, what he wants to do. You know, he may not be there yet, but, you know, if he thinks he can maintain this path, you know, best of luck. My own experience is that, you know, you can only treat people this way for a certain period of time when you don't have unlimited natural resources. Um, and uh, and that the consequences are going to uh, going to be growing for him, and and not in the long term, but in the in the near to medium term. So I think you know again we're not there yet where we need to be, 
and, and I understand why families are feeling so upset and despondent right now. Um, but what I would say is that, you know, the international community is paying attention, <clears throat> is focused on it. Um, actions are being taken. More needs to be done. Um, and we're going to keep at it until all the political prisoners are free. Usted mencionó esta comisión de expertos internacionales de Naciones Unidas que tiene el mandato de investigar las responsabilidades individuales sobre los asesinatos, las torturas y los tratos crueles contra los presos políticos. ¿Qué expectativa tiene sobre el informe que presentará esta comisión en marzo del próximo año? ¿Tiene la capacidad para identificar la cadena de mando de los responsables de estos crímenes? I'm sure that that's what they're going to focus on. And I think if you look at uh, the other UN commissions on Venezuela, on Burma, Myanmar, and so forth, you know, the, the, uh, the, you know, they have highly professionalized staff at the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. And it's a strong group of experts that have been appointed to this role. And I, I expect they're going to shine a very bright light on what's going on. And it's really hard to predict, but in a very positive way, um, what the impact is going to be of their work. And that kind of information, when it gets assimilated into the UN system, becomes a very, very strong tool to facilitate action in other contexts. Um, you know, my view is that on Nicaragua, you need a, you know, uh, a whole system approach to addressing the crisis in Nicaragua. And by that, what I mean is, you know, not just the UN Human Rights Council, but, other, but the UN General Assembly, the UN Security Council. You need regional organizations like the Organization of American States. You know, you need multilateral lending institutions, you need um, governments and other multilateral institutions around the world, um, all understanding the facts the same way, understanding the violations the same way. Um, and then with that evidence and information, making collective decisions about what's the right way to put maximum pressure to to compel uh, Ortega and his regime to, to change course. And I think that, um, you know, the report that will come out next March, I think will be very, very blunt and objective uh, and devastating uh, by equal measures. And I think that that will then be able to create a lot more momentum for action uh, by, by the international community. Again, you know, representing uh, two of the, you know, more than 220 political prisoners, um, you know, Juan Sebastian Chamorro and Felix Mardiaga, um, and knowing of the suffering of their own families firsthand based on our ongoing work together, um, everything I've described is of no consolation in light of the dramatic urgency um, to access them and to get them and all the others out. So I don't want to overstate um, my view of, of the trajectory here because I understand the suffering of the families is a daily suffering um, and is devastating. And uh, at the same time, when I look at the overall trajectory in Nicaragua and the way that we've seen the expansion of the international community's engagement, the way that I've heard from governments and multilateral institutions about the ideas that they're kicking around as to what they're going to do next. As I said, I think a number of them are going to be quite surprising to uh, Ortega and his regime and also um, have an enormous impact. And so, you know, I think that uh, Ortega needs to start to think very long and hard about uh, how far he's prepared to go here because, um, you know, at a certain point, it's no longer within the control of the dictator and the actions by the international community can have irreversible consequences, which may not be entirely predictable. Um, but I think that... Um, You know, we just have to keep up the effort, stay strong, keep fighting uh, yeah. and do everything we can to keep the spotlight on the political prisoners and their families. And uh, and I know, you know, Vicky Cardenas and Berta Valle, um, the, the wives respectively of Juan Sebastian Chamorro and Felix Martiaga are not giving up. I'm definitely not giving up. We're going to keep fighting until they're free. Jared, usted ha tenido mucha experiencia defendiendo y logrando la liberación de presos políticos ante otros regímenes autocráticos en otras partes del mundo. La pregunta que mucha gente se hace en Nicaragua es ¿cuánto tiempo tomará esta agonía? My prediction is sooner rather than later. Sooner than people are thinking. Um, because I just think that at a certain point this becomes very difficult to sustain. Again, in different, you know, if, you know, if, uh, you know, if Ortega and the regime had unlimited resource, natural resources, for example, my assessment of how long they could hold on would be different. Right. This is why the situation in Venezuela is, in my view, a lot more difficult than in Nicaragua. But Nicaragua is a small country um, relative to Venezuela and relative really to any country in the world. I mean, it's a very, very small country. Um, and uh, and therefore, the impact that one can have by taking you know, policy actions like the United States and others are taking 
um, is much more quick and much more hard hitting. And so I think a combination of the impunity with which Ortega is acting and the multitude of mistakes that he is making in terms of how he's mistreating the political prisoners, holding them incommunicado, denying the Bibles, you know, kicking out the nuncio, imprisoning Catholic priests, um, you know, combined with the determination of many important states to, uh, to focus on this situation and to hold Ortega and Murillo accountable means that the prospects for a, a positive resolution, at least as it relates to the political prisoners, is, you know, um, possible in the, in the near to medium term. Um, these kinds of things can happen, you know, in a snap of one's fingers. It really, it's hard to know what will be the, um, the trigger that will make Ortega um, reconsider his position. Um, at the end of the day, as I said, my own experience is that you have to elevate the cost of detaining the prisoners dramatically above the benefits. And, you know, I think that uh, Ortega and Mario are not irrational actors. Um, and I think that if it's a choice between staying in power and releasing the political prisoners, then they would make the choice to release the political prisoners, even if they did not want to do so. Um, as I said, my, my view of the prospects of long-term democratization of Nicaragua and working through all of the challenges that the country is facing in that regard, you know, is, a, is, uh, is definitely not something that I believe is going to be able to be worked out in the near term. It's going to be a much harder and longer struggle. But my focus is much more narrowly on the political prisoners and their families and getting them relief as soon as possible. And so I think that, you know, that I think is something that is achievable in the short to medium term. Gracias por ver este video. Si no lo has hecho, te invito a que te suscribas a nuestro canal en YouTube. Activa las notificaciones para recibir las noticias del momento de Nicaragua. Tu respaldo confidencial es imprescindible para seguir informando la verdad.